Good morning, friends. Happy Friday. I hope you guys are doing really well today. I hope that you're safe and healthy and all you school kids are doing your homework and all you parents are maintaining your sanity and your patience with each other. And uh, I don't know if you guys can hear it. We have frogs on the pond, big time, major frogs on the pond. If you can't hear it this time, I'll do another live stream sometime soon sitting next to the pond and you will not be able to help yourself but hear it. So today's farm snippet is um, we're going to talk a little bit about how grass grows, which is important to know this time of year because it's really easy for um, to overgraze. And if you don't know what overgrazing is, it's basically putting um, a plant into a negative energy deficit where it is um, putting out more energy than it is uh, creating and it will lead to weak plants. And in the case of farmers who, um, uh, grazing farmers who may put their animals out early in the year, you may affect your ability to have food later in the year. So I'm gonna switch this around and I'm gonna do, Chris told me that I totally needed a bigger whiteboard, but we're gonna make this work. I don't know if he's watching this or not today. Okay, so here's the diagram. So we have, when you think about winter time, we have plants where they had a bunch of growth over the course of the fall and the summer, and then it all sort of died back and it died down like that. And so we have sort of the duffy layer of dead stuff along the ground. Those plants still have little bits of roots down there. And those roots are starting to create a little bit of activity. And you'll start to see that if there's any place where there's snow left and you see areas where the snow is melted around some plants, it's because there's stuff happening in that root zone. And what those roots are, whether it's grass or other kinds of plants, what those roots are is a, is a way to store energy, carbohydrates. And so the way that a grass plant grows is it will send up a tiny little shoot and there are some tiny little shoots all around our place right now. It's amazing. So that first shoot gets all of its energy to grow from those roots. It doesn't produce any of its own energy yet. So the grass plant will grow up and it will form a little collar and it will bend over. And that's when you know that's a mature grass plant or grass blade, just one blade. And then another one will start to grow. And when you're in that sort of in between, the first one uses all this energy. The second one, when it matures, will use partly this energy and partly energy from the sun. Photosynthesis. I know you guys have probably heard about photosynthesis. It's the basis of all life on this planet. We get energy from the sun and um, we start to create energy in a plant from this free energy from the sun. So we will start to get a third leaf. It is not until the third leaf is mature and that we actually, the plant actually begins to run entirely on completely renewable, completely regenerative solar energy. So if we come along and we wanna have our cow, we'll make her a belted Galloway cow, belted Galloway cow, there we go. If so, if she is eating grass that is not mature, does not have collars, does not have its ability to photosynthesize itself standing alone, then that plant is going to get set back. It means that it's taking energy from these roots and it means that there'll be less carbohydrates coming from the roots. So the roots will get more shallow, the plant will be stunted, and, um, and it won't get to its full maturity. So this time of year, a lot of folks are asking, you know, what height should I start to graze at? And the truth is, it's not about the height. It's not about the height at all. It actually has a lot more to do with how mature the plants themselves are and whether they're actually generating photosynthetic energy from the sun themselves without pulling on those reserves. So I hope that was helpful. Um, we can talk about, if you have other questions around that, you sort of 
think about that, we can talk about it in weed management and how you can use that knowledge to manage weeds and other kinds of plants. Um, and I thought I would close today because I've been reading a really neat book called <clears throat> Buddhism for Busy People. So uh, I'm not a practicing Buddhist, but I'm sort of learning some things. And I read um, all different kinds of spiritual stuff and, and self-development stuff. I'm just always interested in learning what other people think about things. So today's quote is from um, Buddhism for Busy People. And this is from a Buddha. Uh, there are many Buddhas. Buddha is not a religious figure necessarily in terms of um, a higher being, but um, there have been many Buddhas through history and they're they're all human beings who are just sort of trying to figure things out and sharing what they learn. So this is a quote from uh, one of the Buddhas. The thought manifests as the word. The word manifests as the deed. The deed develops into habit and habit hardens into character. So watch the thought and its ways with care and let it spring forth from love born out of concern for all beings. As the shadow follows the body, as we think, so we become. I love the idea of that. I love the idea that if we think positively, good things come. And if we, um, if we find ourselves really struggling, we should totally own that. And then we should find ways to think positively and add positive habit and add positive character. So I love that. Um, I think that it gives us a lot of power to uh, make the world a better place and we should keep doing that as much as we can. So I hope you guys have a great Friday and uh, I'll see you tomorrow and love you. Stay warm, stay safe, all that stuff. Stay out of the rain. I don't know what I'm doing out here. Anyway, have a great day you guys. Bye.